lesson two of unlocking parametric families. In this lesson, we'll take an overall look at how families work inside the Revit software. And we'll go over goals for the course and how it relates to the final end product we're trying to achieve. So let's open up the O2 begin file from the course folder and get started. So in this file, I've gone ahead and set up a couple of rooms. And inside those rooms, I've placed a handful of doors. Now what I want to do is start to understand how parameters uh, and the properties of these doors, specifically this, this door right here, uh, but how these parameters and properties affect families inside of Revit. So if I click on this door and then switch over to the Properties tab, I can immediately start to see uh, the instance properties for this door. And I can see that the a door is a part of the single flush family and specifically the 36 inch by 84 inch type right here. I can see the level that it's associated to. I can see the current sill height and if I wanted to, I could change that to uh, one foot. So there'd be a couple of steps in front of the door, but let's leave that back at zero inches. I can see other things like the mark and the mark is that specific number or associated set of letters uh, that help define that specific instance. And additionally, I can see some of those Revit out of the box parameters for phasing, you know, what phase it was created in or demolished in if, if I set those settings. So let's click edit type now. In this edit type dialog, I can see the type properties. And so all the doors of this type have these shared properties. And some of those properties are these dimensional parameters. And these parameters are just um, length values that allow us to control the geometry the way we want. Additionally, we have some material parameters which allow us to put in uh, different materials and change the look and the feel of that, um, that door, that geometry. So let's click OK and see how those are kind of uh, assigned uh, to this Revit family. Let's click Edit Family. And I've got this 3D view inside the Family Editor, and I can see them in the Family Editor because this ribbon has changed uh, some of the contextual uh, tools. If I click on this door, I can see in the uh, instance parameters here that under this materials and finishes that there is a associated family parameter called door material. And I clicked on the door geometry and so there's the door material assigned to it. If I click on the frame, as I drag that, if I click on the frame, I can see a uh, frame materials assigned to it, which is pretty cool. Let's go back to the project browser for this and maybe let's go to a floor plan. And we can start to see some of those parameters as well. Here's that width parameter and how it's controlling uh, the width of this door. There's the thickness parameter. And if I go to elevation, I can see the height parameter and how it's controlling the height. And all I'm doing here is, again, if I went ahead and I changed the height to a different uh, value, let's go ahead and type in 8 feet, and hit OK, I can see that that height changed. And so parameters are really just ways to control our families and, and the geometry. Let's go ahead and close out of this because I don't, don't need this anymore and I don't need to save it. So as we go through this course, we'll start to understand how to create those parameters and assign uh, different dimensional parameters and other types of parameters uh, to our Revit families to create them intelligently so we can use them in efficient ways. So the next thing I want to do is create a door schedule. If I go to the View tab and click Schedule Quantities, I can start to make that door schedule. Scroll down to Doors and select Building Components. And what a door schedule does is just allow us to quickly uh, itemize all the doors that we've placed in our Revit project. And in architecture, we use door schedules a lot uh, to help us uh, define uh, the, size, uh, the size constraints of the door, uh, what type of door it is, how it looks, what the frame looks like, the finishes, is it rated. Uh, there's all this information that we as architects put into our door families. So in this door schedule, we can start to see some of those parameters that when we clicked on the door were associated to that door, uh, like the mark. Additionally, we can see uh, some of the room properties associated with the door. Maybe we say uh, the room name and the room number. Let's go back to doors. And then maybe some of those dimension parameters like the width, the height, maybe the thickness, and then maybe just some uh, basic comments as well. And let's go ahead and click OK and see what we get. And so this is a pretty generic door schedule. It doesn't have all the information I typically want in a door schedule, but you could start to see 
how those doors that we've placed, notice there's four doors here. If I close out, I have four doors in my project. Let's go back to the schedule. I see those four doors in, in those properties that we assign to those, those families, or those types, and how they relate back to each one of those individual instances, which is pretty helpful. So the goal of this course is to create an intelligent door family that will help us uh, automate the filling out process of one of those schedules. Let's go ahead and look under the uh, project browser under sheets under this door schedule sheet. Now I went ahead and made a, a sample a door schedule that's a little bit more uh, indicative of what a door schedule would look like in an architectural setting. Now we can see the uh, door mark and the room names and numbers, uh, the width and the height and the thickness parameters like we did before. But additionally, we have uh, like a type uh, property for the door and the type of door it is. You know, this D1 flush door relates down to this legend. The vision door relates down to the legend as well. And I can see from the schedule what type of door it is. Additionally, I can see the finish of that door. It's stained. I can see the type of frame that's being used, whether it's a single frame or a frame with a side light. Maybe there's a transom above it. Uh, I can see the finish for that frame, you know, what color it's painted. Uh, the fire rating and so on and so on, you know, hardware set information, whether it's an office uh, lock set or a passage lock set or an egress door and so on. So this schedule, if we were to make it in Revit right now, it may take a lot more time to fill this out. You know, those parameters that we pulled in from that door schedule, uh, we only had five or six that fill that information. If I were to add all these other parameters, they'd probably show up blank depending on how we've set stuff up in Revit. So what I would like to do in this course is create that singular door family that encompasses all of these types of doors and these types of frames and these types of information uh, into a single family so that when we place it and we tell it what we want it to be, it will automate the filling out of this schedule so that we can spend more time focusing on where that door goes, what it looks like, and not have to worry about this documentation process. If we place it and we assign a certain material or we assign it a certain look, I have the confidence in knowing that that door schedule is going to be filled out appropriately. And that way, like I said, I can focus all my efforts on design, the things that really make us good architects. So in the next lesson, we'll get started.